Um, we'd like to welcome you to Queen Anne's County Public School System. I'm Elaine O'Neill. I am one of the supervisors of instruction for early learning and elementary, but I'm also the new teacher coordinator, new teacher induction program coordinator, which is a new role this year for me. So um, what I'd like to do first is just introduce some of our supervisors that are here and principals. Not everyone came this morning, but they will all be here with you for lunchtime this afternoon. So the mentors, if you would stay seated, because you're going to be introduced at a very special time later. But you can wave <laughs> all our wonderful mentors back there. <laughs> so if you're not a mentor, if you'd stand up so that I don't miss anybody. Okay, we have Mr. Dave Brown over here. He is our local accountability coordinator. So he is the person who is involved with all of the testing with HSA, MSA, and our new park assessments that will be coming up. And then we have Mrs. Carrie Mitten. She is the administrator, administrator at um, Anchor Points Academy, mm -hmm. which is right out in the back there. And Ms. Diane McGowan, she's our special ed supervisor. Mr. Rob Watkins is our math supervisor. And he also does elementary math, so we work together with the elementary. And then Mrs. Jackie Wilhelm is principal at Queen Anne's County High School. Mr. Willie Waits is the science supervisor. Ms. Tina Thomas is our social studies and CTE supervisor. And then over here we have Ms. Lee Vietz, who is English, world language. Oh. Is that enough? <laughs> we wear many hats here. And then Mrs. Julia Alley, who works on our school improvement plan, yes, but also a coordinator. But she's also our fine arts um, supervisor. So anyone who is involved with arts and media. And I should mention that Mr. Waits is PE. And then we also have over here Mrs. Catherine Draper, who taught in this system and was an administrator in this system and was a supervisor in this system. And is now down to just one day a week. <laughs> so she will, is my partner in crime here with the mentors. So she's our mentor leader. Good morning. Welcome. So, I would like to introduce our Director of Curriculum Instruction, Ms. Roberta Leverton, who would like to say a few words to you. Good morning, everyone, and I would like to say welcome to the family, the Queen Anne's County Public School family, that is, and we are so glad that you are joining us today, and we hope for many, many days and years to come. You're probably sitting here right now as I was many, many, many years ago, thinking, what have I gotten myself into? What is this gonna be? I hope that you'll find out the same thing I did, that what you've really gotten yourself into is a wonderful place to be. You'll be surrounded by people that want you to succeed. And I don't think that that will go beyond today before you actually have that feeling. A um, couple of things about Queen Anne's County. You've joined a system that's small enough that you will quickly be known as an individual here, both by the staff at your schools and by the community as well. I believe you'll be overwhelmed by the support you'll feel from the staff and from the parents and community as well. You've also joined a school system that cares about your success and will help you do so, help you be success in many ways. You've already been introduced to um, Dr. O'Neill, who's responsible for our new teacher induction program, as well as Catherine Draper, Mrs. Draper, who oversees our mentor program. Each of you will be assigned a mentor, an experienced teacher whose sole responsibility is helping you to be a success. And I must say, looking back in that row, I know many of those individuals personally, and they are top notch, and you are lucky to have them on your side. Later this afternoon, you'll have time to work with your teachers, with your school's teacher specialists, or if you're at a high school, the academic dean. And they are your go-to people. They're going to help you with um, the daily navigation through a new curriculum, through new procedures. You can turn to them and part of their responsibility, as Dr. O'Neill said, we wear many hats, part of their responsibility is to support you as a new teacher. 
You're also a part of a system that has a sustained, that has had sustained leadership with a common goal. And that goal may have changed words from time to time, but the goal is to assure that our students get the best, I think I've lost my, there we go. To assure that our students get the best education possible, no matter the curriculum, no matter the assessment, student achievement and ultimately their success has always been at the forefront of what we do and the decisions that we make. You've joined a system that's been led by Dr. Carol Williamson, whom you'll hear directly from in just a few minutes. But she's going to talk about you. She's not going to talk about herself. And I want you to understand that very few people in this state would disagree that she is one of the strongest instructional leaders in the state. And we are fortunate to have her. She runs this system on a very personal level, and she takes the success of this system very personally as well. And it's because of her commitment and her style, you'll find the leadership of this system, from the school-based administration to the supervisors and directors, committed to you and willing to roll up their sleeves and work with you. For those of you who are novice teachers, truly in your first year of teaching, you're starting your career at a very unique time, some might say a challenging time in education. I can't remember a time when there was so much changing in the field of education at one time. We're all experiencing new curriculums, new assessments by which we judge students learning and their success, and then new ways to evaluate teacher performance as well. Queen Anne's County has long been looked upon as a high performing system and we continue to be so. Although during this time of transition, the state assessments that we are required to use do not align with the instruction that's going on in our classrooms and do not provide us with the information that's been so useful in guiding our work in the past. But we continue to move forward with confidence that what goes on in our classrooms will ultimately lead to data that show our students are competitive, not just in Maryland or in the nation, but in the world as well. After all, our motto is preparing world-class students through everyday excellence. You're joining our family because we believe you can contribute to our goal. We have high expectations for you, just as we expect you to have high expectations for your students. We expect the same things that you'll expect from your students. We want you to work hard every day. We want you to try your best, to give it your best every day. We want you to listen and respond to the feedback you get and last but not least, we want you to care about your students. And I think you'll hear more about that from Dr. Williamson. I'm not going to end by saying good luck because really, <laughs> luck has nothing to do with this. Everything is in place for you to be a success. Just need you to catch your breath and get started. Thank you very much. It's my honor to introduce our Teacher of the Year, Marlo Coppage from Queen Anne's County High School. Hi, everybody. They asked me to speak on behalf of the teachers today. Um, first off, um, you're working in the best county in the state. Um, just want to make sure that you know that and I fully believe that. I um, am a graduate of Queens County High School. While I was in college, I worked at Queens County High School as an aide. Um, my first two years teaching wasn't there, but then I've been back there now for this is going into my eighth year. I'm in the math department there, so I see some of my new folks back there. Um, <laughs> but uh, the biggest thing is, um, you know, relax. You, you can do it. It's really, really easy. Everybody is capable. You've been through all this training. You can handle it, right? Right? No. So um, there are people who've been here before you, OK? Um, this is, will be you know, probably one of the most rewarding and challenging years 
you know, ever. Uh, I can, everyone always tell you everything about their first year. I remember the classroom I had. I remember the students I had. I remember, you know, you'll remember um, a piece of it. Even those of you that are moving here from another county, there'll be something from this year that'll stand out to you. Um, those of you that are novice teachers or brand new, one thing I did want to mention is um, Commands County, we have a big 4-H fair, and it sounds silly to mention it to you, but um, supplies are usually hinted out there. Rulers, <laughs> pencils, yardsticks. Um, as I said, this is I'm going into my tenth year teaching. I still go with a big bag. I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher. And you know, people love love to give stuff to you. It'd be a little, a little more difficult this year with my face and name plastered everywhere. But maybe I'll still see if I can get a few more things out of it. Um, one other thing I wanted to make sure I said is um, ask for help. If you get to a point where you're frustrated or overwhelmed, the first week back, um, you guys are there by yourselves, and it'll seem super easy. You know, I got this. You can set your plans up and everything else. And then everybody else comes back, too. <laughs> when you're at one of the bigger schools, it's a little overwhelming at first for the new teachers because there's a lot of people there. But you'll have tons of people come up, introduce themselves, and say, if you need anything, just ask. And they walk away, and you're like, what was their name? So we're used to that. It's OK to go back and, you know, ask their name again or you know you mentioned that I could come to you and ask you know I'm wondering and you know it might be a month or so before a question comes up and it's okay to say hey remember back on that first day you said I could come to you and most of the time if they can't find the answer for you they can find someone who does so don't sit there and stew and worry and you know especially this year like they were saying with all the changes that are going on a lot of the seasoned teachers are going to have um, some problems with the changes as well, or some challenges with the changes as well. So, you know, you're not going to be alone in that piece of it, but everyone's going to have someone they can go to to ask for help. And, you know, feel free to do the same. No one expects you to know absolutely every little piece of everything um, starting out, especially if it's a brand new building, brand new school, and you're, you know, maybe brand new completely to teaching. So, um, I'm the only Marlo in the system, so if you go to put in the email, you can type Marlo and find it. I am not the only Coppage. My sister-in-law is at Centerville Elementary School. My mother-in-law works here at the board. So if you do want to email me, it is important that you put the Marlo piece in there. Um, my mom is at Kennard Elementary School. I've got some ties around. Um, so you can check uh, in with any of those people. I'll throw them out there as a... Uh, people that you can check in if you're in those buildings or I mean, feel free to email me the one thing I do ask if you do email me don't look at what time I respond to your email because um, I'm more of a night owl which works great teaching at the high school but uh, um, I'll be happy to answer any questions or anything that anybody has so I don't know if there's anything else if you guys does anybody have any questions you want to ask a teacher <laughs> Too early for that. Not yet. <laughs> Can you come back at the end of the day? <laughs> Email Marlo, M A R L O. No. <laughs> Thank you. And it's now my honor to introduce Dr. Carol Williamson, superintendent of the schools. really goes a lot faster than I thought. I thought I had a few more minutes to relax. <laughs> okay, I'm going to share your table if you don't mind. I don't do very well when I don't have my notes out. But I just want to mention something. I would like Mrs. Leverton to stand up and walk out here a minute. I'm going to tell you how great she is anyway, but come here, come here. Oh, it's we so even cool. think alike when we wake up in the morning. <laughs> we think alike with instruction and we think alike when we get dressed, right? <laughs> Anyway, so you may find that happens in the buildings where you go, but you know, it's important to have people around you that look like you. Uh, I try. <laughs> and some days we all show up in the same colors. That's always good, too. Well, anybody here anxious, nervous, anxious? <laughs> well, guess what? <laughs> Me, too. Me, too. 41 years I have been doing this, and I still get anxious on the first day of school. I still get anxious. And why do I get anxious? Because I know what could happen during the year. Some of you are brand new. How many of you are brand new? First year of teaching. I, there's about 30 some of you in here, I think. So I think there are a few more hands you might not want to tell. Well, you know what? You're not really much worse shape than the people that have had experience. Because I know there are about 15 people sitting in this room that have been in education before that will be in this county for the first time or in this position for the first time. And they are anxious too. 
because every year it brings something a little bit different. It brings something a little bit the same, but it brings something a little bit different. So you know that if it's going to bring the same thing, you know that the only differences for you probably are going to be the students or some parents that might be difficult or new administrator, new supervisor. But if you're brand new, even if you had student teaching, you, know, you really don't know what to expect. So your anxiousness is a little bit different than somebody else's, but we're all anxious. I get anxious because I never know how this is going to go. Now, I labor very hard over what I am going to say today because I know it leaves an impression with you. And the problem is um, what I think through and write in my 12 pages that I have here, highlighted and bolded, just to make sure I pick up the right words, um, I may not get to. Because see, there's this little issue. You are really probably not focusing on what I'm saying because there's only so much you're gonna take in today, right? Because <laughs> you're looking around see what other people are doing and all that. And the, the issue is, there is some information that's important for you to know today, but there's probably not a whole lot that we need to give you beyond developing the feeling that Mrs. Leverton mentioned, the feeling that Marlo mentioned, that it's, you know, we have relationships we try to develop and supports here so that you understand where your resources are. So that's one of the critical things we hope you'll walk away with. And when I came in and I saw all the people on that back row, all of our past educators that still come back to support teachers because they care so much for the other teachers in the county as well as they cared that way about their students. It's really, really important to us to have them here to support you and for you to develop that relationship. So, of course, I've covered nothing in the first part of my talk, but I am going to flip my pages because I do have some things. Here's what I was thinking might be um, beneficial for you. First, I had put in my, my position, my paper, my little write-up, we are a great system. We're known as a very high-performing school system in the state of Maryland. And we've always had that reputation. And, and Mrs. Leverton mentioned about the Common Core curriculum and changing, and there's a little bit of a gap in what we were um, doing and what we were testing. We know that, and that's happened to us before, actually on several occasions, because Maryland's had several reforms. And in each of those reforms, we have tried to provide the supports to teachers first, and then we've gone back and built in other supports. But we want to make sure teachers have the curriculum and knowledge that they need to be able to teach students. And so even if it's not aligned with the assessment, the assessment's not showing our real results, we know that we're providing a very strong program for our students. And I think our community knows that, and our community expects that of us. So I know that's important. I also know that Maryland, for five years, has been number one in the nation. And you probably have read that because every year, and they're not probably not going to be number one this year unless all states have really done what they said they would do, which is to go to Common Core and let go of their state assessment. So we may change position, but that doesn't mean Maryland isn't still probably the best state in the nation. Because like us, we're all going to pick up and pull together and make sure that we have students ready for these new assessments when they come about. And then we will, once again, as we have in the past reforms, surge ahead and we will be back at the top again. And I think it's important to understand that. So you'll read some things probably that'll say, oh look, Queen Anne's County dropped, or oh look, Maryland dropped. And maybe that's true, but it won't be we have dropped for very long because we are really positioning ourselves so we'll be ready when that new assessment comes in. So I want to make sure I mentioned that. And we know also in Queen Anne's County, and I think both Marlo and Mrs. Leverton mentioned this, we have a really strong group of educators. We value professional development. We value the kind of training and opportunities we give teachers. But we also value that job embedded instruction that we provide for your professional development. And we value the collaboration that you do among your, your teams. And so I think that that's important to understand for us too. We try to put as many dollars as we can towards professional development because we believe it is the one thing that really helps us advance to the front. And I hope that you will value it as much as we do. And we got a lot of feedback about our professional development opportunities. We think it's important. Would you believe that none of this is in my talk? <laughs> I don't know where I am in anything. Um, but we really do, because I, I, if I didn't say anything else to you, it would be about the professional development. Um, we have a strong group of supervisors 
and they're led by Mrs. Leverton. They look to see what those strategies and that knowledge and the skill level you need to have, and we try to provide that support for you so that you will be able to develop it and move forward with your students. Okay, so I'm gonna flip through here a minute. Um, I wanted to mention, and this is gonna be very awkward, but you, did, you got out of here and back in fast, so I, I know you can do this. You turn around and you look at that back wall. You're going to see a map that shows you Queen Anne's County Schools. You see it? And you'll notice that down on this little tiny island, <laughs> down here, Kent Island, you're gonna see most of our schools down at that end. And then right in Mid-County, you'll see a few schools. And then up at the top, you'll see just a very few schools, because that's how our population is. We have many, many people living on Kent Island. It's where we have most of our schools. We only have 14 schools. We're considered a small school system. Um, we're, we're sort of average for the um, Eastern Shore. You know, we have Kent County next to us with only 2,000 students. We have 8,000 students. We have about 550 certificated staff and we have about 500 more support employees. So we have about a staff of about you know, 1,100, 1,200 people. And we're bordered over on the other side of the bay by Anne Arundel that has thousands of teachers and, and you know, 100,000 or more students. And then there's the bigger systems like Prince George's and Baltimore County. So our Eastern Shore sort of bands together and it works together to try and look at issues that we can resolve together and team together so that you'll see that the Eastern Shore has a lot of um, collaboration going on. We, we operate by our feeder systems. We think feeder systems are important to consider because elementary feeds in the middle, middle feeds into high school. I just thought, and at the time, I thought it would be interesting to do, and I'm not sure it's interesting to do right now, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Um, <laughs> just to show you what it is, my job is to humor you until you get ready to have the real work here. Um, I'm gonna start with Queen Anne's County High School, which is our, one of our two high schools. Queen Anne's is the one that's located right in Centerville has about 1,200 students. It has our Career Technology Center. And it's fed, oh, let me have the Queen Anne's County High School people put their hands up a minute. So we have a few new people there. So we have it fed by Centerville Middle School and Stevensville Middle, and um, Sutlersville Middle School. The two, north, two of the schools, one's in the, the mid-county and one's up in the northern part of the county. So where are Centerville Middle and Sutlersville Middle? Now, Sutlersville Middle is very fortunate. It's our very newest school for one year. All the technology in the world, all of the amenities you'd ever want. So, you know, I think you get to go to Sutlersville even though you might be driving further, you really have a great place to go work. Um, not that all of our schools aren't great, but they don't all have all of the same level of technology that you find there. That um, school, Sudlersville Middle, is served by, or fed by, Sudlersville Elementary, which is where? Right in front of you. And Churchill Elementary. Okay. And then we have, um, at the other end of the county, the southern end, we have Ken Island High School. Okay, Ken Island. And Ken Island has an annex. An interesting thing, but they're ninth grade. They're so big, their ninth grade cannot be in the same building as the as the main building. So at the annex, which happens to be located in one of the feeder schools, Mattapique Middle. So Mattapique Middle is fed by Mattapique Elementary. So I'm getting exercise here, right? Physical activity. Mattapique Elementary and a few students from Bayside. Okay. <laughs> And then we have Stevensville Middle, another feeder of Kent Island High School. Where's, okay, Stevensville. And Stevensville is served by Bayside again. And Bayside is fed by, you have Kent Island Elementary sitting here. And then they also have some students from Graysonville. No new teachers. No, Graysonville here. No new teachers. Right no new teachers. Not right now. Yet, but they will. <laughs> because we're considering a new fourth grade teacher there because they have a class size issue. So we're looking at that. Okay, I think I covered all the schools except our um, APA, which is our um, school for students that have had some disciplinary issues. And that is sitting right here. And we have um, a real need for that school because they 
pull in students that have had disciplinary issues, as I said, and keep them for a period of time and then are able to put them back in the main buildings and they're able to be often very successful and not return to um, that school. So it's an alternative program, but one that's very valuable to us, it serves middle and high school. Dr. Okay. You also forgot Centerville Elementary and Kennard I feeding forgot, into Centerville yeah, Middle. I did. Yeah. Okay, so Centerville Middle, because I was rushing through, Centerville Middle School is served by Centerville Elementary School. Yay. Yay. <laughs> and Centerville Elementary and Kennard. And Kennard Elementary School. Kennard and Centerville and Bayside and Ken Island are really not set up as a K-5 school individually. We, we really believe in pre-kindergarten through fifth grade schools. But we have four of our schools that are set up as a primary and an intermediate school. Um, Ken Island and Bayside call themselves campus school, but that's because they're like right across the street from one another. And Centerville and Kennard, although we've tried to get there, to get them to be a campus school, um, the population has not really wanted to see us go that way, so we cope with that. But um, we really try to work together. And the reason I think feeder systems are so important is if you don't realize the students that you're receiving from the school that's sending them to you and what skills they've been able to accomplish and how their students are doing so that you can take those students and then begin to develop them, and if they don't understand what it is you need, then you really do have some serious problems. So it's important that feeder systems have conversations. And you'll hear lots about that at the end of the year when we talk about articulation. Now, in addition to um, knowing who's around, I really would like to share one other thing, and I thought it was interesting, Mrs. Leverton also. Well, I did have two things. Um, as a part of um, our being great, we had an opportunity to get um, accredited by Middle States Association. We spent a lot of time over the last couple of years assessing ourselves and looking at what we do and how we do it and having all of our stakeholder groups look at us. And out as, as an outgrowth of that accreditation program, we ended up with a new mission, vision, some core beliefs, and a profile of a graduate. And those three documents are standing behind, are sitting on the wall behind those people that are standing over there. But you will see them everywhere you go. You'll see them in our front hall. You will see them in your buildings. And they're not just documents hanging in a frame. They're documents that really mean a lot to us. And the reason they mean a lot to us is they really do tell people what we're all about and what we believe in. And that the profile of a graduate is something new that came out of our Middle States Accreditation Program that says this is what we would expect of our students when they leave us. And we want them to have those 21st century skills. And they're, they're um, living documents enough that we sat here with all of our administrators who were in this room all of last week because that's when they began. And they sat around in uh, feeder groups, as a matter of fact, and they talked about what they'd been able to put in place over the last couple of years and what we still needed to do to make sure that the students that left our school system had the skills and the knowledge they needed to have in order to be successful when they leave our school system. And that means that they're able to go on to college or on to careers ready to be successful and have the skills that they need. And we think it's important that that happens. We also reaffirmed our five goals that we have in our master plan. And I'm going to tell you what those five goals are without a lot of detail. But I know you're going to hear more about them because we have a master plan or a strategic plan that we live by and have lived by for many years started about nine or ten years ago with these goals and then we reaffirmed them when we did our middle states but the very first one is high student achievement it's the first thing we think of everything we do is driven by is this going to provide a strong program for our students is it going to be rigorous enough is it going to make is it going to ensure that we have the right people in place that they're monitoring instruction that they have the appropriate curriculum being taught, all that. That's all, you're gonna hear a lot about that and the strategies that are with it. You hear about the professional development that's there to support it. Our second goal is about teacher recruitment and retention. We wanna recruit the best and the finest. We wanna have all highly qualified teachers, all certificated teachers in the areas they teach. We have worked really hard to get there 
and I think we are bordering on close to 100%. We're not 100% yet, but we're in the nine, high 90s. And that's because we have said we're not going to hire people that don't have the certification they need. And that's because you have to have the content background to be able to work in your area if you're going to be successful. Because you have to be able to really explain it in a variety of ways to students. And that rigorous curriculum we have requires a whole different way of teaching now, that common core curriculum that Mrs. Leverton referred to. So that's our second goal. And we work hard to make sure that not only do we get you here, but we keep you here. That's the retention part. And we track why people leave, and we try to make sure that we are accommodating those kinds of concerns so that we don't lose people. And we're very big on hiring people from within our county and that live here because they stay here. So we want to make sure you stay. And as a matter of fact, I heard that we have eight people in this room, I hope they're all here, and eight people in this room that were graduates of Queen Anne's County High School, or, or Kent Island High School. Can you put your hands up? So we want to welcome you back. So we, we feel, you know, it's really a credit to have you come back and teach with us. And if you are living here, that's great too, because that makes it easier for you to stay at work longer because that's important. <laughs> and then, and then if, if you don't, we'll try and get you to come and live here because we know it's important to have you close to your school so you can do that. <laughs> Our third goal is about communication. It's about a couple of things. It's about making sure that there is good, clear communication from me, from the board, not only from us, but um, out to all of our stakeholder groups, but from you back to us so we understand what your needs are. It's important that you have clear communication to your stakeholder groups, your parents, your students, because they need to understand what you're all about and they need to feel comfortable with you. And then we have the fourth goal, which is safe and secure schools, because nobody can work very successfully if you don't have a safe and secure school. And you will find that most of our schools have been constructed so they provide for as much safety as possible. And then you will also find that we're going to see a lot of practices coming in place that are going to help us know what to do in all types of emergencies because that has become a big issue across the nation, but across our state as well and across our county. So you're going to hear lots about that during the school year. And then um, our fifth goal is family and community involvement. So it's important to make sure that we have parents and community aware of what's going on in our schools and involved in any of those processes that we can involve them. So, how am I doing? You're fine. Good. Right. So here's the last thing I want to do. It's, it's long, but it's the last thing. <laughs> you know, I've been around, I've told you I was around for a long time. 41 years longer than some of you have been alive. I, I am learning to recognize that more and more. I don't feel like that though. That's the good part. So if you really like what you're doing, which I know those people in that back row do, they don't feel that they're as old as they are, not that you're old. They don't feel that they're old. They really feel still a part of what you're doing. And it's really hard for me when somebody looks at me and there is one person in this room that just did it recently and says, well, you know how my kids view you, and, and I know how they view me, or they view me, because I'm thinking I'm like their peer. Um, your peer, but. <laughs> Maybe your peer. <laughs> so, I, but I still feel young, and you know why? Because I like what I do. And that is a message I'm gonna give to you. You need to like what you do and enjoy it. Because if you don't like what you do, this can be a long and miserable job. Because you are responsible for children and making sure that they are successful. You are responsible for making sure they have growth every year. You're responsible for being sure they like going to school and they want to keep going every year. So that in itself is important. That's so, so see, for me, you're like my kids. Well, sort of. But you are. Um, every group that comes through. I feel like you're my kids. I feel even like I feel like Mrs. Leverton's my kid. She was one of my principals. She was a teacher. I remember when she was a teacher. But I remember when she went on to be a, and I recognized she had greatness in her. She went on to be a principal. She did a great job as a principal. I can say that about all of our administrators and supervisors. We see you working every day. We recognize your strengths. We try to support you and give you the opportunities you need. So I think, you know, you gotta like what you do. And if you don't like what you do, nobody's gonna be recognizing that in you. So it's important 
to smile at people and let them know that you um, enjoy doing them, being educated. So what I thought was, I, I have a little bit of credibility just based on my years. And then I was a, um, I actually worked in one county for 20 years and you think I would have thought that was about it because I didn't think I could transition. But I was a teacher and then I was a specialist and then I was a director in one county. I did elementary, I taught in elementary school. I was a K-12 English language arts, foreign language supervisor. Then I became a director of everything so I got to learn everything. Then after 20 years, decided to make a transition to Queen Anne's County. And I thought, well, I'll never learn everything here. I'll probably only stay a few years. 21 years later, I'm still standing here. And I started out as an assistant, went to an associate, and then it just happened that we had a transition. I ended up um, going for the superintendent position. I have to tell you, every job has something different. Every job is like a new job. Every year for you is going to be like a, a new job. But you have to like what you do. So I think I have credibility just because I've watched people. I have been responsible for professional development, for new teachers, for teachers that have been here around, work with people that have needed help um, improving their skills. So I sort of see the kinds of things that help people be successful. So I just wrote down what I thought were six strategies you could have in place. This, this is my perspective, but I heard Mrs. Um, Leverton mention a few of them, which was interesting to me that we sort of thought about the same things. So my very first one was developing a positive relationship with your students. Now, when I started school, they said, when I started teaching, you go in the classroom and you don't smile for the first six months. That's what they said. You've got to be really strict set your parameters, you don't let kids know any, you know, you just say this is what it's like. You are the teacher, you establish yourself. Now we know that's really not true anymore. We don't want you to stand there and not have a feeling of um, showing students have, you value what they do. We want you to be at the door, we want you to be at school every day. You've got to be at school to be able to show that kind of support and we want you to show students that you value them that you know who they are. So you're at the door, you learn their names as quickly as you can, you try to call them by name, you talk to them about things that they like to do, you find out some of their um, interests, and you're able sometimes to go support them if they're involved in athletics or some of the um, other areas like fine arts, performing arts, you know, to talk about some of the things that they're interested in to show that you know that they're more than just the student in your classroom because what research has shown is that students who really um, feel that they're valued develop this intrinsic motivation and they want to do well. They want to do well to be you know, successful in your classroom or in the school or in the community. And you want that because you want them to want to continue to be motivated throughout their years of school. So that developing a strong positive relationship is really critical. And it's up to you to do that. Then be um, well planned and teaching the appropriate content at the correct level of rigor. So you're going to hear a lot about rigorous levels of curriculum because Common Core State Curriculum does require that we do things differently and that we're not the ones up, just like I'm doing, talking all the time, that we have students actively engaged in the instructional program. And it's going to be important that you do that. Um, but Common Core requires different types of strategies, so they're going to be doing more of the um, things that would have them engaged, like um, peer, opportun peer opportunities. Maybe I should read what I'm doing. Yep. I should read what I got here, ladies and gentlemen, or you're not going to get it. Um, I don't want to say more about Common Core, except because that's what I had here. The responsibility to see um, students grow academically and that you would be regularly monitoring their instruction. So I think that was the piece I was trying to bring out there, that you're going to be monitoring their progress as you move through the curriculum. And if you're not teaching Common Core, it's going to show up when they get to those assessments when we start doing the um, park assessments because they won't have had the appropriate content and you really do students a disservice when you teach things that you just like to teach and you forget to cover the curriculum that you're responsible for. But there are lots of people there to help you make sure that you have the appropriate curriculum in front of you. 
The third thing, which I was alluding to there, was engaging students, because personally I think that's one of the most important things that you can do. And we do more student-to-student -student talk, and we do more student group work, small group work, <coughs> and we do more project-based learning with this kind of um, instruction. And that isn't something we used to do where we had the rows of seats and students um, listen to you talk and you gave them handouts or, or ditto sheets to complete. That doesn't work anymore. There's got to be a lot more writing involved and a lot more discourse involved. The fourth thing I had down here was making sure that your students re um, received a lot of feedback from you, almost daily. Because if you were really looking at what they're doing and you are trying to ensure that they're moving forward, they need to know what it is they're doing right and what it is they need to improve upon. And their parents probably know that as well, need to know that as well, and so it's up to you to make sure they get that feedback. And there are lots of ways to do that, so you don't have to be reporting out to, if you're in a middle or high school where you have hundreds of students or 100 students, um, you can't necessarily do that every day yourself, but you can find mechanisms so that they get feedback about the kind of work that they're doing. And then the fifth thing I had down here was communicating with parents regularly. Parents aren't going to um, be able to support you if they don't know what you're doing in the classroom. They don't know how their students are doing. So they often, the cons, kinds of concerns I get from parents is um, something to the effect of, I didn't know my child wasn't being successful, and then all of a sudden on the report card I found out. And how come nobody told me? Because I could have been helping them all the way through if I had just known. And so it's sort of our responsibility. We have a lot of mechanisms for communicating. So high school and middle school have um, some things through Parent Connect that they can do. And elementary schools use folders and um, have phones. All of you will have a phone in your classroom. So that it makes it easy so you don't have to go to an office or to a planning area to make a phone call to parents. So if you want to call them on your planning period or you want to call them before or after school, you at least have that opportunity without having to be around other people. You can make it a private phone call. You can call for good things as well as you can call for bad things. You don't always have to call about something that they're not doing. But it's the keeping parents informed. And parents like to hear things about their students. Or having a newsletter, or having a little email that email newsletter that you send. We're trying to make that more available through our um, software that we have available for you to use. So the communication is going to be critical. And they can't support you out in the community if they don't know what's going on in your classroom. So even letting them know some of those things is important. And the sixth thing I wrote down was another thing I heard Mrs. Leverton respond to, and that was just asking for and accepting feedback for yourselves. Because you need to know how you're doing. You can't operate every day and never get feedback, and at the end of the year, all of a sudden, it won't be at the end of the year, it'll be at mid-year, but you'll get an observation or an evaluation, and you're going to want to know, and you should ask questions about why it was whatever the feedback was and what can you do to make it even better or what kinds of things can you do differently to really help your students because just because you get feedback doesn't mean you did something wrong just might be a way you can further enhance what you're doing but feedback's critical and you have so many people that can help you starting with your principal and they have um, at the elementary level they don't have assistant principals except at the um, campus school but they have a reading specialist, a math specialist, and a teacher specialist, all who will help provide supports to you. You have a mentor at the elementary level. You have a mentor at all levels. You have um, a supervisor of your area. And even though they can't be there all the time, supervisors are um, as accessible as they can be to you. But they have that content background they can help with. So you have many people they can provide that kind of support anytime you need it. But your mentors are going to be the people that are going to be closest to you because they're going to come and look at you and try and give you feedback. And they are there just for you, and you hear lots about them. And they're very special people. And your leadership team at each of your schools is also very critical. So you have either your administration or you have those specialists that are in every single building. So you have everything there at your fingertips if you want it. So, all right, so here's a little quiz for you. See how attentive you were. Who can name any of the five goals that we have in this county? Because believe me, they are important. Anybody got a goal they can remember? 
what? Okay, student achievements, one. Teacher recruitment and retain and attainment or retention. Okay, positive relationships would come under probably under the safe and secure environment or try and make people comfortable. Because I'm talking about the goals now. Because you're on my you're on my strategies. All right. Okay. <laughs> hmm, communication is is number three goal. So we have student achievement or high academic achievement. Community involvement. Community and parent involvement. And then the safe and secure schools I sort of related to and we did the one in the back. All right, how about six strategies? What could you do to be successful? What are six easy strategies? What were they? Okay. I'm always gonna have that student, student engagement, always, all right. So we got the planning every day, making sure it has appropriate rigor. Sure the feedback. feedback is critical. Communicate with your parents. Communicating with parents, perfect. Accepting feedback. Accepting feedback yourself. Okay. Positive relationships. Positive relationships. Did I leave any out? So you're a great audience. <laughs> so I hope you know that you are so welcome in this county. And um, not only am I accessible, Mrs. Leverton's just as accessible as I am. And so are all the supervisors. And especially accessible will be those people lining the back wall. So now I am going to turn it back over to <laughs> Dr. O'Neill. Thank you very much. I hope you can see from the very top all the way through to the teachers that you're going to meet in your buildings, that it is all about building relationships. Um, next, I think it's time for a drawing, so make sure that you have a ticket. If you don't have a ticket, raise your hand. Mrs. Draper will bring you one. Now, remember I said Mrs. Draper only works one day a week now? That meant that she moved to a smaller office. So she cleaned out an office she had for about how many years? A few. A <laughs> few. So when you receive your goodie bag, she had wonderful things that we found in her office. Oh, treasures. Treasures. <laughs> <laughs> so, let Mrs. Leverton draw the first one. Yes, indeed. Okay. Just the last three numbers, you think, or I the think whole so. thing? The last three numbers are seven, one, three. Seven, Seven one, one, three. three. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's gonna put one. <laughs> Is she walking with me this morning? Thank you. Yep. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> if nothing else, I like the bag. <laughs> 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 right now, wait. <laughs> you should open. I should open it. Right. I had a spoon. <laughs> Oh, it's yogurt. Yeah, I love yogurt. That'd be perfect. Not if it's been there for years. <laughs> that we did put in there. All right, Alex, smoothies too. I can put the yogurt in the smoothies. <laughs> Hi, I'm Christopher Killian Kiefer. I went to school at Westchester University and I am teaching at Mattapique Middle School 6th through 8th grade band. Thank you. 
Hi, my name is Jamie Bunning. I went to school at Salisbury University. I will be teaching at Sudlersville Middle School, teaching seventh grade math and advanced seventh grade math. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lynette Miller. I graduated from Wilmington University and I'm going to be teaching sixth grade math at Mattapique Middle. And in Salisbury State University and the University of Phoenix and I will be teaching pre-K at Mattapique Elementary School. Hi, my name is Sarah Walker. I went to school at University of North Carolina at Wilmington and I will be teaching math at Queen Anne's County High School. My name is Nicole Laverde. Uh, I got my master's at Arcadia University, formerly Beaver College and undergrad at University of Maine. I will be teaching special ed at Queen Anne County High School. My name is Corey Smishnik. Um, I went to Indiana University of Pennsylvania. I'm a speech language pathologist and I will be at Mattapique Elementary School. Uh, my name is Saval Knick. I went to school at Ithaca College in Western New York and um, I'm going to be teaching band at Mattapique Elementary. Hi, my name is Stephanie Ramsey. I'm going to be at teaching at Bayside Elementary School, Special Education. Hello, my name is Michaela McGowan. I attended Cabrini College in Radnor, Pennsylvania and UMBC in Baltimore, Maryland. I'll be at Bayside Elementary teaching fourth grade special ed. Hi, my name is Tara Coleman. I went to um, undergrad at McDaniel College. I went to get my master's uh, at University of Phoenix and I'm teaching at Mattapique Elementary first grade. Hello, I'm Chris Adelsberger. I went to school at Wilmington University and I'm a fifth grade teacher at Southersville Middle School. Hi, my name is Julie Massa. I went to school at Wilmington University. I will be teaching biology at Kent Island High School. Hi, I'm Kyle Levine. I'm originally from Wilmington, Delaware and I went to Westchester University. I will be teaching chemistry at Kent Island High School. Hi, I'm Mary Rice. I'm originally from Baltimore, Maryland. I attended Earlham College and I will continue to teach French at Kent Island High School. I am Amber Taylor and I will be at Churchill Elementary. I will be teaching pre-K in the PM and that is it. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sue Miller and I'm going to be the new media specialist at Kennard Elementary School. Um, hi, my name is Erin Kussmeider. I went to school at Penn State and then the College of Notre Dame and then I will be at Churchill Elementary School as a special education teacher. My name is Jennifer Mariano. I went to Trenton State College, which is now the College of New Jersey. I uh, got my bachelor's and my master's there. And I will be back at Centerville Elementary School teaching pre-K in the morning. Hi, my name is Laura LeBlanc, and I'm going to be teaching at Centersville Middle School, teaching choir music, and I went to Mansfield University. Hi, I'm Suzanne Klein, and I am teaching art part-time at Sudlersville Elementary School. I went to Delaware State University, and I live in Middletown. Uh, my name is Will Hughes. I graduated from Virginia Tech and got my master's at Wilmington University. And uh, I will be teaching at Sudlers Middle School doing seventh grade special education. Hi, I'm Wendy DeShiel. I went to school at Queen Anne's County High School and I'll be teaching uh, technology at Stevensville Middle School. Hi, I'm James Mark. I went to the University of Delaware and Delaware State University and Wilmington College and I'll be teaching social studies at Anchor Points Academy. Uh, my name is David Wagner. I went to school in Whitehall, PA, at Whitehall High School, and I will be teaching high school English at Queen Anne's County High School. Hi, I'm Cindy Aguirre. I went to Newman College for undergrad, Westchester University for graduate school. I'll be teaching at Kent Island Elementary Special Education. Hey, my name is Zachary Holacher. I went to Washington College. I'll be teaching 7th and 8th grade math at Mattapique Middle School. Hi, my name is Dewan Wright. I went to Longwood University in Virginia and I will be working at Bayside Elementary School with fourth grade. Hi, Valerie Ortiz. I uh, went to University of Maryland College Park. Um, I'll be teaching at Centerville Middle School Art. Thank you. Hi, my name is Julie Kimball and I went to Western Maryland, Maryland College, which is now McDaniel College. I'll be teaching at Centerville Middle, sixth grade language arts. I'm Jen Butler. Um, I went to school at Fairmont State University. It is university now. It was college back then. Uh, I will be teaching at Ken Island High School, um, the main building the first semester and at the Annex second semester. It's good to be back. Kesley Dean. I went to Longwood University and I'm the PE teacher at Southersville Elementary School. Hi, my name is Stephanie Scouten. I went to Wilmington University for a Master of Arts degree and I will be teaching at Stevensville Middle School.
Hello, my name is Megan McArdle. I went to Towson University and I'll be teaching 7th grade language arts at Stevensville Middle School. Hi, my name is Gina Crook. I graduated from University of Maryland and I'll be teaching 5th grade at Mattapique Elementary School. Hi, I'm Michelle Tate. I will be teaching at Mattapique Middle. I will teach 6th, 7th and 8th the life skills class. <laughs>